our first guest on today's Big Blend Radio Champagne Sunday show are smart energy pioneer Christine David Hallquist and filmmaker Derek Hallquist. And they're joining us to discuss their dynamic and fascinating documentary that not only covers the energy industry and climate change, but also of Christine's transgender transformation. It's a powerful story of accepting and embracing change. Uh, you can go to the website, denialdocumentary.com, and also stream it on Revry, uh, Revry, <laughs> I want to call it Revry, Hello. Revry.tv. I know, I haven't had the moonshine yet. <laughs> Just a sip of champagne. <laughs> Reverie.tv, uh, and it's free. You've got ads on there, but this is a special channel dedicated to LGBT, uh, you know, Q. It's, it's everybody on there, and uh, just an amazing thing. So we should just toast to them, too. Why not? Hey, I like that. I like that. But cool. let's start hey. off with a toast to Christine. Welcome to the show. How are you? You, I am, I am uh, very well today. Thanks. It's so good to have you good. here, and can can we start chanting, Christine for governor, Christine for governor <laughs> for 2020? <laughs> sure, you can, you can do that. Okay. I like the right. sounds of it. All, all right. right. Sounds good to me. Uh, Derek, welcome. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you. Thank you. It was a, a very empowering weekend, and uh, Christine and I got to uh, meet and listen to a lot of the the really the biggest leaders in in change and making things better for for everyone and not just the mm. few. So where were you? Tell us a little bit about yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, Christine, you want to, you want to start? Well, it was, it was interesting. I was actually kind of working, which is usually how it is when uh, Christine are together uh, as a, as a media person and a camera mm-hmm. person. Uh, um, but I was able to sit in a few and and. Um, you know, Christine was actually there in attendance of the whole thing, and I'd love to hear uh, what what she thought as as a as a takeaway. Well, I I was yeah I was so this is was the the uh, first meeting of the Sanders Institute, uh, Bernie and it was really driven uh, Jane Sanders, um, Bernie's spouse uh, was organized this, um, and uh, they invited progressive leaders from all around the world, incredible leaders. Uh, with the idea that we need to really uh, we need to organize not only in our country but all across the world in order to solve some of these biggest problems, uh, mm-hmm. you know it's it's my belief personally, and it's certainly the belief of just about everybody who attended that conference that you know with 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 the uh, grim uh, future facing us in terms of our climate, you know we've really got 12 mm-hmm. years to to turn things around. And as you know, humanity, we have to learn how to collaborate across borders uh, in order to solve the, this big problem. We have to move away from this net focus of nationalism to uh, working with country and the world. You know, humanity has to learn how to collaborate. Otherwise, it will be the end of humanity. Hmm. Agreed. Agreed. I think it, it's, and I think people do want to. I think it, we need to have more meals together with people we don't know, uh, everyone of different backgrounds. Like, you know, at the beginning of the show, mm-hmm. we were saying, hey, it's, it's Hanukkah starts today. Why can't we celebrate and, and start to learn about maybe a tradition if we don't normally celebrate it to, to look into that? And um, so I think there's a, the holiday season sometimes really can breed this uh, start. I think, Derek, you were saying that it's time for unity, for families, for people to reach over instead of not reach over. And I think there is through, and this is what was so amazing in the documentary, Christine, is you were talking about these smart energy plans, um, utilizing almost, you know, the Internet and, and utilizing technology that we have I think there is that, you know, there's a lot of negativity on social media, et cetera, but isn't it through those kinds of things, too, that we can have unity across the, around the world, people connecting that way? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot. You know, yeah, 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 sorry, yeah. go ahead, Christine. I mean, what I was, what I was going to jump in and say yeah, is that, you know, uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of what the, the theme, the biggest takeaway for me and continues to be the biggest takeaway in life is that, uh, you know, transparency – can only work when it's actually transparency and 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 that includes you know being honest with each other and understanding of each other and what does understanding mean but empathy empathy is the most important thing for for us to work together and i feel like more and more what we see is marketing and advertising trying to divide us not just politicians and take away empathy and 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 it's very easy to push people with fear 
Uh, people respond to fear uh, from mm. an emotional standpoint a lot easier than they do. Uh, you know, love is more complicated, but that's why mm. love is more of a payoff. That's why love is more empowering. And, and that was why my favorite speaker was Cornell West. Who oh, really yeah. brought up. I mean, it was just unbelievable how he was explaining exactly what I heard in Taiwan two weeks ago before their elections is that, you know, in order for us to move forward, we have to break down these silos. We can't just be, you know, white, black, brown, yellow. We can't just be LGBTQ+. Plus. We can't just be environmental. We all have to be together. The environmental movement mm -hmm. has to work with the LGBTQ movement. And that's mm -hmm. exactly why. That's exactly why we didn't separate the stories as they occurred. Yeah. Obviously, the documentary was such a long period of time. We weren't able to um, really to, to be transparent. We weren't able to separate the movies. But at the end of the day, we were happy we didn't because the more time passes since the finishing of the film in 2016, the more it comes to realize that that is the most important thing that we can do on planet Earth is all come together right now. Isn't it unify through change? I mean, that's really it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But don't you? Yeah, you know, what, Adam. I'm, 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 go ahead, Christine. Go ahead, Christine. Well, I want to give you an example too because um, I found, you know, I found myself still working hard on empathy. Um, you know, one of the I won't mention the major network, national network that that interviewed me, but I get this question all the time, and I still, you know, my anger over Donald Trump, I still haven't. I'm almost over it. Um, but <laughs> what I mean by that is. They asked, you know, I always get this question, you know, what do you think of Donald Trump? And my answer was, oh, he's, you know, he has serious psychological issues. Um, and, and then I said, and I regret this, I said, so he's, you know, essentially he's a crackpot. What, what I, I really shouldn't, you know, I really regret saying that. What I really should have said, you know, he has serious psychologic, psychological issues, and we have to learn how to love those kind of people and help them you know, help them see their, their problems. You know, I recognize that my anger and, you know, hatred w will not solve our mm. problems. We have to learn how to overcome our own personal, you know, our own personal anger in order to, to get where we need to go. Yeah. I think there's so many of our issues come from fear, fear, and then fear of not having money. Um, it there, that, that's kind of where I feel like we have to start this idea of um, not not being willing to take care of each other. I have mine and I'm going to guard it, and I really don't care if you have yours. And I, you know, and I see um, I see politically how that's working or not working for us as the person on the street. And I don't mean like homeless person on the street, but I do and I don't. I mean, for everybody who is not in politics, I haven't really talked to anybody in the last oh, 10 years that thinks politics is working for the people who are voting. So, and and I'm I'm not taking pot, shot, and pot shots at any one party. I'm taking pot shots at the whole thing. It, seems fear-based and it and it seems to me it's getting worse because now we have an administration who is pushing fear as a sales pitch and i think when you're when you're fearful you build barriers and you learn to hate where you didn't hate before and and it's unfortunate that we are going that way and i wish i knew how we could reverse that well, christine you can fix the, the grid can you fix the system <laughs> <laughs> well i think that yeah. you know i think i think that was the, the what the standards institute was about um you know it's it's about starting with the basics on the system and addressing exactly what you just said we have mm -hmm. we have leadership you can lead you can either lead through fear fear and division, or you can lead through hope and aspiration. Um, and if you look what our current administration is doing, it really, you know, our, our, the fact that we've seen the most, the most, the biggest transfer of wealth in the history, you know, we're, we're, just to give you an interesting piece of data, if, you know, if you took the average income and split it evenly amongst all of Americans, it'd be $380,000. But actually, the the median income is fifty thousand nine hundred. We have the mm -hmm. largest separation of wealth in the world in our country, um, 
And and that happens. The reason that that can happen is because we have got an administration that is keeping us fighting with each other. They, you mm-hmm. know, instead of they talk, they talk about these problems. The reason we're struggling today, they will tell you, is because of these immigrants. Well, these immigrants are wonderful people, and we have mm-hmm. evidence that immigrants make communities better. But, but because it gets to our fear response, which is really our, our reptilian response, you know, our mm-hmm. brain's reptilian response, mm-hmm. we, it, it, it's very effective. You know, our thinking brain, it takes about five times as long to respond as our reptilian brain. So, you know, mm. but, but we are an advanced civilization, and we can, we can think our way out of these things. But, mm-hmm. but, but we, we have to work hard to do that. It, it's kind of hard work uh, uh, being loving and empathetic. Well, there's a risk factor. There's a risk factor, and then there's a popularity in it as yeah. well. And I think that's the other thing. We talk about fear and then, like, the money part with people. Mm-hmm. But then I also wonder about, you know, is it a popular thing? Or how are people going to look at me? It's, you know, there's that ego image uh, confidence level. What do you think, Derek, as, as you go around filming people? I mean, I know from what we do that there's – a shyness for people to speak, or, or sometimes it's just blatant. I'm, you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know, don't you see, think that there's a popularity confidence thing that goes with it? Yeah, there definitely is. I mean, since I was a teenager, my goal in life was to, to. I, I know I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to because it's full transparency. Fox News is the worst thing I think that's ever happened to. Uh, at least Americans and, and mm-hmm. the, uh, you know, it's definitely affecting a lot of places in the world. Luckily, a lot of other places in the world think of it as it is, which is a joke, an absolute propaganda uh, pumping machine. Um, but, <laughs> uh, you know, as I, as I go around, you know, I, this weekend was just like, you know, it's like I'm in, as I'm filming, I, you know, I was a couple weeks ago in Taiwan right before their elections and they get 80% voter turnout. I mean, they're young. This is only, They've only been voting since 1994, mm-hmm. having public mm-hmm. elections. So they're very excited about it. But to me, going back to what you said about, you know, you even talk to voters that don't think that democracy mm-hmm. works for them. Well, democracy only works if everybody is part of it, you know. So we, we had we had only 20 percent of 20 to 30 year olds come out in Vermont for this election. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. that was, a, you know, the, the odds were we were going to lose. We were up against so many things, but the fact that that happened was really the most painful thing for me. And I mm. think uh, Christine shares that too, is that really only 20% of 20 to 30 year olds, this is our future. Why are we not voting? You know, that yeah, drives because me they crazy. think it doesn't make a difference. Right. You know, they, they think of, this is the thing and you just, this is the core. They think I am only one vote. I can't make a difference. Mm. One person cannot make a difference, and that is exactly how certain administrations want you to, to feel about yourself. Because when people join together, there's a strength. Mm. When you feel like you are the only one, you are the weak one. But that, I think you kids know? feel that way. To yeah. be really honest, um, we've done, so, uh, we've been covering youth for. Mm-hmm. Years and we work with a lady, Bobby DePorter. She's the co founder of Supercamp, it's the world leader in summer academic achievement programs. And Bobby and uh, she has her eight keys of excellence nonprofit teaching kids the, these eight skills, life skills, and how to develop their character for mm-hmm. confidence. Like the first one is integrity, learning what integrity means, uh, learning what commitment means. So we're ambassadors for this program, but uh, she, along with Stedman Graham, created a nonprofit called uh, Community Alliance for Youth Success. And over the years, we've gone to our offices in Oceanside, San Diego, to interview uh, youth that have learned these eight keys and watch the and, – and when you are there with the kids and their parents – it, I mean, it's really hard not to just kind of cry while you're, you know, interviewing them and having this conversation to see you start to realize that they're taken seriously and, you know, not taken for granted that people do care. And you see the relationships, mm-hmm. this dialogue become strong between the child and the parent. And then through this uh, Community Alliance for Youth Success, they created this program where they celebrate youth all week long in communities. So for a full week, the business community, the parents, the schools, um, all these different organizations come together to celebrate youth. And then the youth put on this festival. 
And what happened in Oceanside last, or this year, excuse me, they had TED Talks. These kids had TED Talks and helped each other create their own TED Talk series. And kids were talking about how they didn't even want to come out of the room. They didn't want to even apply themselves to things they, they cared about and they really mm-hmm. enjoyed because of shyness, being bullied. Um, and having these kids on the show, it really, they were talking about they really feel like they're not seen. Kids are not seen. It's that old saying of be seen but not heard, and, and that's how they feel. <laughs> so I wonder self, about that. Isn't that the self-defeating thing, though, because they're not voting, so they're not seen. Mm-hmm. So it's like that's what you get. And, you know, and people forget, like, Bernie Sanders, his first race, he won by 10 votes. 10. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. Wow. Like, Bernie yeah. Sanders himself, like, you know, Senator Sanders is, is an like, amazing leader who's really brought so many young people together. But they, you know, they need to be reminded that, like, you know, there's there's races all over the country that happen where people won by a small margin, and if everybody yeah. votes, then you're that's your voice, that's our one voice. And I, I do feel again, it's not their fault. Uh, uh, you know, I remember primary and secondary education. I mean, the only reason I was excited to register to vote was because I back then I loved Bernie Sanders when he was a congressman for our state in Vermont. And mm-hmm. so I get it. If you don't have some sort of political leader that is near you or within reach that really you see as as your voice i i do understand i do have empathy mm-hmm. for the people who think it's a waste of time but um the, the clock is ticking for so many different movements Issues. that we need to oh get my gosh. yeah we well, just have to do climate it climate change alone what what's yeah for you what's what inspired you to start this documentary because there's so much in it i mean this was like a life story attached and also our story um in regards to energy, things that, you know, it, it taught me so much, and, and it was so easy to understand and follow along. Derek, I mean, you're amazing at what you do, because when you talk about transparency, Christine, you talked about that in there, too, this transparency that needs to happen with the energy companies. I think, like, just like we think, like, the leaders of politicians, it seems so far away. Climate change is real, and it is not far away. It is here. It is oh, now. Right here. But this is what I feel like, even when it comes to the energy issues, your utility companies, like, a, you know, where you mail your check and you just get mad at them if the electricity doesn't work. And so even when you think solar, everybody's like, okay, if a cloud comes over, that's it, we're out. So there was fear of that. What was it that led you to say, I'm going to do a documentary on energy? Well, I mean, it, it really started with going back to the beginning of our conversation, like not understanding something. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it, it, as early as 14 years old, I would film things that I didn't understand. My my first big sort of uh, breakthrough personally was that I, uh, there was a teacher strike because, you know, I, you know, I was 14 years old. I didn't really understand what that meant. I didn't understand what a school board does or budgets or anything of that. But I saw the teachers that I had, you know, that were my teachers, you know, not, not a, just five years before, before, and, and they were upset. So I started following this and, and one of the um, it was scabs. Is that the uh, is that what you call people that cross the picket line, right? Yes. I think, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So one of yeah. the scabs uh, was a college kid, and his his friend picked him up in a pickup truck, and they played uh, an ACDC song as they peeled out of the driveway, <laughs> you know, standing standing unbuckled, like you know, sort of getting it, trying to get attention, which they did. And I was the only camera person there, so everybody had me. Uh, you know, they took my tape and they drove it to Burlington uh, to to put on the uh, put on the air, and it led the newscast. And wow. the next morning, cool. the next morning, the the strike was over, and they the they uh, settled because um, it, it was just so dramatic, and so many people got so upset to see that their kids were being taught by people behaving that way. Uh, it sort of was, you know, that break. Sometimes things that have nothing to do with our discussions are the things that lead us to come together, right? I mean, it's it's. That's, yeah. that's exactly what ended up happening in the movie, too. I started out not under, trying to understand the energy debate, which was just sort of a never-ending path. And, and, and then Christine and our family's personal struggle with dealing her re, with her reality and, and accepting her reality, her gender identity, ended up being the lesson. You know, that the lesson from the gender struggle and the personal struggle was the bigger lesson on what we have to do with the energy and climate change debate, which is empathy, understanding, And what I'm noticing now is ignoring people that have the arrogance to think that they understand more than someone, not just one person, 97% 
of scientists yeah. who have spent their entire lives studying, have PhDs. Mm-hmm. This is what they do. And someone who, you know, has bankrupted their real estate company dozens of times and somehow, you know, through this angry mob, got themselves into the White House, can actually have the audacity to over and over say, well, I'm not sure it's real. I don't believe it. You know, it's just like, it's a hoax okay. from China. I I'm, I'm really, <laughs> right. have to say, I really believe that Donald Trump is the can't read. Oh, because we yeah. never see him reading anything. No, I think he can. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, and it, and, and the fact that people still trust him is what worries me is that basically the only thing we can do is get our voters to come out and get back to 70%, 80%. Let's look at Taiwan and try to get there. Let's at least get to 65% voter turnout. And that way, that 20 to 30% of crazy people who are not going to listen to professionals, and I shouldn't say crazy. I'm going to take a lesson from, from this weekend mm. in, in what Christine says about love and empathy. People who have been led by a network mm-hmm. who's been dangling a carrot in front of them, telling them that everything else is fake news. It's not their fault. If you think about it, they've been sort of brainwashed into this and, and it's going to take them a while to realize that they're following, you know, a, a path, a doomsday path. So, um, well, I like that, that your role of transparency and Christine, you talked about that in the documentary, this transparency. I remember uh, president Barack Obama talking about transparency. I don't know how easy it is when you're a president to truly have transparency. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know, man. I, me and and how the whole political system works. There's, uh, there is good and there's bad, and sometimes, just like in the energy industry, we get to this like, oh, they're all bad, they're all rotten, oh, they're all good, and you know, there's this all or nothing. And through your mm-hmm. transparency, through your transformation, you know, becoming Christine, but also through the transparency of the energy industry, I learned so much. And I could go, oh, I've got to look at things from a different lens. I need to look, okay, not everything is the same here. Not everything's the same there. Um, the energy industry, um, instead of being, because as environmentalists, right, we, you, there's a side that goes, stop the coal production now. Stop everything now. Stop oil. Stop gas. <laughs> stop all of it, right? But that doesn't really work. We learned that from covering mm-hmm. some of what was going on outside Joshua Tree in regards to them still wanting to take water out of Cadiz and, and drain the desert for pools in Orange County to solar, major solar construction, wind farms, um, these huge things. But watching what you were saying, there has to be this balance. And I think that you can only have balance of different sides coming together through transparency. And that's what I learned from you, Christine, is not everybody's the same and not every energy grid is the same. <laughs> Everything's different for other places, but we can come together. Yes, I, I think, um, you know, what, I, what I, I think I said this in the film, but I'll say it. It's really important for people to recognize if somebody comes to you with a solution, you know, that if we just do this, it'll solve the problem, then you should immediately not believe them because, because that these things are so difficult, but we would have done it a long time ago. You know, so, you know, mm. so for example, solar, you know, people come, people, I was amazed how many very intelligent people believed that they put solar panels on their roof, that they, they, they had a, a carbon free living, well, the reality is, up, you know, here in New England, 85% of the time we have to buy replacement power for that solar. You know, in your area, it's probably about 75% of the time you have to buy replacement power. And, and so, you know, it, wow. it's, it's really about, about thinking it through and saying, if somebody comes to you, anytime somebody comes to you and says, if we just do this, it'll solve the problem, you should immediately be skeptical. I don't mean cynical. I mean skeptical. That's a diff, you know, a, a, mm-hmm. a, a very clear. That's a different term, because yes, solar is a very important part of solving our our our, our climate issues, and so is wind, and so is storage, and so is hydro, and so is connecting every home and business with fiber optic cables so we can communicate to appliances. That's all part of the solution. Hmm. So it's not just hmm. you know getting and you and you can't just dump one for the other. You have to have that transition too, right? That's the other part of it. 
is transition again, whether it's personal mm-hmm. or business, you know, um, you can't just, you know, put everybody out of work. That's the other part. And that's where I think the fear is. As soon as you talk about change, that fear is I'm going to lose everything. Yeah, let me just talk about transition. I think you brought a great point. You know, I spent almost 10 years transitioning. And I look back and I say, you know, some, many, many people in the transgender community is like, why did you take so long? Well, I took so long because it was right. It was the right thing to do it. I spent five years in, in, with a transgender counselor. The first thing she asked me is, you know, what do you want? This was in 2010. What, what do you want out of this relationship? I said, well, you know, as a man, I'm a very strong leader. But as a woman, I'm weak and I'm full of shame. I said, when I transition, I want to be strong. It took us five years. However, I was strong and I was proud. Um, mm. You know, so so it, it does take time and it should take time to do s- some of these big changes, because if you move too fast, you're probably going to make some big mistakes. Mm, I agree. I agree. Mm, and that makes sense. D- Derek, um, through this, and did you go in with, with Christina, the counselor at all, or have anybody else give you input on handling this transition and change? Yeah, I mean, um I, I uh, I'm lucky enough. My spouse works uh, in in the field of psychology, and and she recommended a few books. And uh, uh, you know, I got a, a therapist who special specialized in this as well. In our family, we all had our own therapist as well as a group therapist, all separate. So it was really easy for us. Well, nothing's easy, but it was easier mm-hmm. for us to have our own private space to deal with it as well as as a group space to deal with it. Oh, that's a really good point because I think when you're going through this, there's shock. There's, um, okay, how am I going to handle this? How are you going to process it? And everyone processes different. And that goes back to this, Christine, where I was saying, like, what you were doing with the with the smart energy, it's kind of the same thing with each having your own, you know, counselor and then going to group. Isn't that the same thing as the grid uh, and changing the grid to the smart energy with that, that little yes, machine thing? I, I, <laughs> That little yeah. like yes, cell phone that's gadget. That's exactly it. Yep. Mm. Yes, very yeah. nice. That's that was. I'm glad you picked up on that. And you know, that's those are the nuances of the film, which I think were very powerful. And I, you know, I certainly credit Derek uh, and his team for that. Um, I was, you know, I when I first saw the the film uh, in 2016 at the LA Film Fest, you know, I was blown away about how they were able to to show the incredible similarity between transitioning gender to transitioning our climate. And when you talk about, you know, people having individual counselors and group counselors, that's exactly what we're talking about. Every individual in order to, and and when I talk about individuals, that goes back to what I started the conversation saying, we have to collaborate all across the world. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we recognize that every individual is going to be impacted by climate change and every individual is going to be impacted by the solution and every individual is going to feel so much better when we when we all work together and as individuals to solve this big problem. That is so perfect. I mean, it's to me, it's exciting. To me, it's exciting. I get excited about anything like change. I'm like, okay, something new's coming, you know. And and that's what I think I love about nature. And um, you know, climate change is not fun, but it. I think it does. You know, Nancy always said. And I know we talk about this on shows all the time. The only time people are going to get together is when the aliens come. Yeah, aliens but now we're like we're probing yeah. Mars. The, so like, it's climate. Here. I think it's, it's climate, climate change. change. It's like when you have to. Now the world will talk where before it wouldn't. It wouldn't talk, you know. And, and we still have those who will not talk. And, and yeah. or they say I mean, the wrong unfortunately. Thing. I don't, I don't think I, I honestly don't think uh, you know a lot of of Christine's lesson in the movie repeatedly was, well you know whatever it was whether it was the the wind farm or mm. us dealing with her issue we and, and her dealing with her own uh, struggle her whole life is we don't make change and and, and even the psychologist said this that we interviewed oh, she was awesome, until we yeah. feel a lot of pain like lo- I mean. And, and as a group, it takes lots of pain. And, and uh, I unfortunately think by the time, basically what I'm doing is, you know, I'm enjoying my winter activities because they won't, I mean, it's just a fact. They will be gone. Mm. Like, this is the way it's going to be. Florida will be underwater. 
There'll be seawalls around our big cities. I mean, that's just the way it's going to be because it's, it's way too late. And we've doubled down on uh, fossil fuels. We're getting rid of cars in this country now. Ford and GM, now that they can't export their cars because of our favorite president, now we'll no longer be creating cars. Why? The most popular vehicle in this country is a SUV. That is just fundamentally wrong at this point in our mm. lives. I just I can't wrap my head around it. So it's, yeah, we just have yeah. to we have to really figure out how are we going to deal with refugees. We can't even deal with a small refugee uh, globally. It wouldn't even be called a crisis that's coming into through the border of Mexico. Globally, it's a joke to call it a refugee crisis, but here it's made into a big deal. So until we actually come together and make solutions, these people will suffer because there's going to be more and more millions, tens of millions of refugees that need places to go, and 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 we have to actually that's figure exactly. out a way to deal with that. That's that's what that's we have the to thing. do. No one talks about that the climate change in regards to refugees from climate change entire islands are being taken out and people mm-hmm. have that have you know their entire family life is there it's like suddenly sorry vermont you need to all move come out to the desert you know it, it's it, it's, we got it's earthquakes. suddenly it's going to start happening everywhere <laughs> and and not just in this country mm-hmm. around the world and people are going to start being nomadic which they are we always have been but this is a Dangerous slope. I mean, not to use a slope me, as a term, but it's true. Well, I would say dangerous just, because, yeah, just, because, sorry, Christine, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let me just interject something here because, you know, this, this, this won't be the last crisis. You know, let's, mm. I, I'm optimistic that we're going we're, we're, we're gonna to get through this. It'll be with a lot of pain, but it won't be the last crisis that humanity faces. No. If you, if you look at the, the history of humankind, you know we've had we've had serious crises, whether whether it was the bubonic plague or you know or or, or major major climate shifts will will happen in human you know assuming humanity survives the climate change you know it's inevitable so you know that we we could get hit by an asteroid that, um, mm-hmm. that'll that'll cause big impact to the climate I think the key and this is kind of what I hope people get out of the movie the key is for us to learn as you know as as a as a as a globe is to mm-hmm. learn how to work through these things because we you know let's assume we solve climate change there will be another crisis uh, mm-hmm. so so i don't want us to say this is the end of the world no. i want us to say we've we've faced global catastrophes uh, throughout the history of humankind the big difference today is we have such powerful communication where within minutes we can see what's happening across the world. But certainly if, you know, you go back 2000 years, uh, it, it, you know, at, at, you know, at, at Christ time, people weren't even recognized as human until they were six years old. So, so, you know, it's, this yeah, is, yeah, it's but, interesting how we feel um, we have to classify everybody and everything and put them in little compartments so that we can think about it properly in our minds that we can we can think about it like you know borders we have to i i we love traveling and i really wish there were no borders i don't know why there has to be borders other than money that's the only reason i can think of is it's like taxing i'm going to tax this population so i have to put a border around it so everybody knows who's going to get taxed what um, or you could say it's for defense, except usually not really. And, it, you know, the border thing, we we put things in little boxes. On a hillside. Yeah. And um, yes, I exactly. think On our big, side. yeah, <laughs> full of ticky tack. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think our big lesson is to stop separating everything into little boxes because it doesn't work because it's like dominoes you just push one and the whole thing falls down and that's exactly what we're where we are right now don't we need to be willows christine yes and i i think you know when i come and i love the, you know i'm really i love the fact that i'm transgender because it's um if you look at at gender itself even you know we can slice things so thin when trying to separate ourselves you know Mm -hmm. people ask me what it's like to be transgender. I don't know. I only know what it's like to be me. Mm. It, you know, because, it, it, you know, we're, we're such a, 
you know, the numbers say we're about one, you know, maybe there's 1.8 million of us in the country. But then there's so many differences within the transgender community and our experiences. So it, it's, it, yeah, so the point I'm trying to make here is, holy cow, you, you just can't find enough boxes to put things in. <laughs> this, exactly. This where I'm going. That's right, because, you know, when I look at it, it's, I, I meet someone, I meet them for who they are, not go, okay, is it LGBT, is it LBGT, LG, LB, uh, you know, I, it, all of that, and, and I'm terrible at it because, you know, and it's because it is about the boxes. Yeah. It really is. The only thing that I want to have a box around is, like, knowing that don't eat that because you have an allergy. That's it. <laughs> Other than that, you know, this, this whole thing is it's really about we should know people for who they are, not that exterior labeling system. And, and I think that happens in, like, we talked about marketing and all of that, like our musicians coming on in, mm. in a few minutes here. Their whole thing is you can't just label us prog rock. We're a little bit of everything. So the labeling system you know, and I don't know how that goes back with, with the science part of it, Christine, in regards to even looking at electricity. Um, it's, it's interesting because it's like you need borders, but you don't, too, just in that as well. Like you have to have a – it has to flow, right, no yeah, matter what. Yeah, it actually flows. If you look at our grid, we have a North American electric grid. We don't have a U.S. grid. You know, we're, mm. we're connected to Canada, um, and, and those connections are – you know, if you look at, in Europe – all those all those electrons cross borders, uh, so you you know you can't. That's what that's the point. The point is, you know, the electric grid is going to be the solution to climate change. We have to electrify everything by definition because we have to move away from fossil fuels. Right. So already we've 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 eliminated borders because our grid doesn't have borders. Cool. See, this is cool. Okay, so uh, everyone, Denial, the documentary, you can go to denialdocumentary.com, but reverie.tv, I just want to keep saying reverie, it's a thing from living in South Africa, I want to make it Dutch, sorry, but <laughs> reverie, that's how I would pronounce it, but uh, reverie.tv, so it's R-E-V-R-Y, uh, can you tell us about that, uh, because this is really a cool channel, Derek, uh, where it's free for, for folks to watch. And learn. Yeah, exactly. And and there's a there's a, 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 a trial period if you'd like to also eliminate uh, commercial content, which I, I know, uh, mm. you know, sometimes is really frustrating, you know, in the age of Netflix and Hulu also offers that. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really exciting. It, you know, it, it, it's uh, it, it, it's 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 really focused on LGBTQ sort of uh, content. Um, you know, it's the first world's first uh, queer focused uh, channel, but you know, kind of like denial. There's a lot of other things in there that you know, really, our gender and sexual identities are such a small thing that we've as a culture made so big, right? I mean, mm-hmm. think about our mm-hmm. daily lives. Like how much, how much do we consciously think about our gender or sexual identity as we do things, or even mm-hmm. about our own identity? I mean, if you think about it, uh, really, uh, our jobs are are a bigger sort of identity and, and especially our families and where we live are more of an identity than anything. But so, so, um, you know, just like our film, a lot of other, there's a lot of other content there too. And you should really check it out because it's interesting to see all this put together. And it's, and talk about no boundaries. <laughs> it's in over a hundred countries. Look at that. Right, yeah. exactly. That's amazing. Exactly. 35 million right. homes over 100 countries. That's so cool. I give Reverie.tv That's a hope. big champagne toast. We'll get the Magnum <laughs> out in a yeah, Magnum big for, toast, right. <laughs> for denial. You did such an awesome oh, job. Really I, I mean, good. I just, I, we both love documentaries, and I think it is that, that one thing that really can change the future is through documentaries because it is one of our purely, uh, you know, our pure transparent ways of learning and to see the world. And I I just, to me, thank goodness for that. You know, I toast to that, but I want to hear what your toasts are before you go. Uh, Christine, what are you toasting to today? I am toasting Bernie and Jane Sanders. You know, I loved Bernie before, but now I just adore him. He, uh, he is, he is a saint. Um, And, and uh, he's, he's done work all across the world. Um, He's, he's our hope. Mm, I agree. I agree. I like he's, that. he's cool. I mean, the mm. one thing I've seen of him is that he never changes in regards to what he stands for. He's got exactly. integrity. And whether you like him or not, anyone, the reality is when someone stands for something and they have integrity in it, um, 
it's it's just a gem. He's a gem yeah. for that, I, and that's a great example of of really understanding how to not not mess up your message and really be speaking from your well, heart yes, and and he with is. and 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 having the science behind it as well. That's important. Uh, Derek, what are you toasting to? Well, I, you know, I agree with Christine's toast. It was, a, it was an amazing weekend, and I'm I'm glad it was the first because there should be many. Um, and uh, but I would really like to toast family. You know, it's it's Hanukkah mm-hmm. today. It's really the the kickoff to the holiday season. There's so many holidays this month for for every culture. And uh, um, you know, uh, my kids are so excited about Christmas, and we just decorated our house. And so my toast cool. is to family. Right on, oh. right on. Well, we toast to you and your families, um, and yes. thank you for an awesome documentary. Thank you for educating and inspiring mm. us. Uh, really, really appreciate it. And uh, everyone, again, denialdocumentary.com is the website to go to, and also reverie.tv. And we're going to play a song for you. It is called Waiting, because you waited quite a while, Christine, and then you have the period of trans- transition that you're talking about. And uh, so this song is Waiting. And um, it also goes with that point of, you know, things take time to make happen. And that's why you can't keep putting it off Mm-mm. because you, <laughs> you have to keep working at it. Get on it. Uh, so this song, Waiting, is from Kwame Benet's Shakedown out in New York. Well, now they're in New Jersey. But um, cool. the message mm-hmm. of Kwame Benet is peace, love, and positivity. And uh, you can go to KwameBenetShakedown.com to learn more. But here it is, Waiting. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank yep. you so much. Yeah. Yep, thank yeah. you so much Everybody. for having us. Yeah, you take care and have a ho- happy holiday sis- uh, season. Here it is, everybody, Waiting. I've been walking down this road Seeing the world passing me by Though my feet are getting tired I won't, I won't let you down I've been waiting for so long For my day, my time to come I'll take my chances with these songs cause I know it won't be too long I've 